How's it going guys and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be checking out how we can fight the secret boss called Pride and Joy in Final Fantasy VII Remake. We need to defeat this optional boss to get the ultimate weapon trophy. As well as that, we'll also get the best accessory by far in the game if we do manage to defeat him. So, without wasting any more time, let's jump straight into it. To break it down plain and simple, in Chapter 16, we'll come across the Battle Simulator for the first time. The Battle Sim fights work very similar to the Colosseum matches, in the sense that you're not allowed to use items, you have to go through usually 5 rounds, and between each round you automatically recover 50% of your health and mana points. And to unlock the final fight in the Battle Sim against the Pride and Joy prototype, we need to first finish every single Colosseum match, as well as every single Battle Sim match. Now there are three things that make getting this trophy a little bit tricky. The first one is that there's two Colosseum matches, specifically the two where you have to fight with Aerith by herself, that you can only do in a very short window frame during Chapter 9, which is immediately after you actually fight in the storyline Colosseum matches, and before you drop her off to get her dress done, you need to go back to the Colosseum and get done the two Colosseum matches with Aerith on her own, as there's no other point in the story where you can access the Colosseum where Aerith happens to be in the party, so these are pretty missable. If you did miss these two Colosseum matches, simply go back once you finish the game in Chapter Select to Chapter 9 and get them done. And then there are the hard version of the Battle Sim matches. These last few here won't even show up the first time you enter the Battle Sim. To make these higher difficulty ones appear, you will need to be playing on the hard difficulty. And for those of you who don't know yet, to get the hard difficulty, you first need to finish the game and then simply choose the hard difficulty when you go back to chapter select. However, don't worry about having to play all the way through chapter 16 every time you want to get to the battle sim, as once you go back on chapter select, it's much easier to go to chapter 17 instead. And here, very close to the beginning of the chapter, immediately after Red and Barrett move aside this rubble that's blocking off the stairway, if you go to the right, you'll see Chadley here, and there's also another battle sim, just so you don't have to play through chapter 16 entirely every single time. So now, assuming through blood, sweat and tears, you have finished all of the Colosseum matches, as well as all of the battle sim fights, you should have now unlocked the 7 star difficulty fight here at the battle sim. And obviously, this 7 star difficulty challenge will only show up if you are playing on hard difficulty also. Now, unfortunately, it's not quite over, we don't just get to fight the pride and joy prototype and call it a day. The difficulty here doesn't actually really lie in the final boss itself, it's more to do with the lineup in the first four rounds. Now the reason I say this is the most difficult fight in the game is because the first round is against Shiva, but it's not just the regular Shiva, this is actually an updated version, where she has full resistance against fire, which makes it a real pain to chip away at her health, and also take into account you're not allowed to use items here. The second round is against the fat Chocobo, the third round is against Leviathan, it's pretty different from the regular Leviathan fight you do in the VR simulation. And then comes the magical round number 4, this is where the fun really begins. As soon as we start the round, we get to see our good old buddy Bahamut here again, and then halfway through the fight, we get to see a nice Ifrit summon also join in the very same fight, so at one point we're going to be fighting Ifrit at the same time as we're fighting Bahamut. Luckily, Ifrit is a pretty weak summon, you can kill him pretty quickly if you save up a limit break or some Blue Saga, but still it all comes down to what moment Ifrit enters the fight. If he happens to enter in a moment that you're just about to heal up or you're re-putting your barriers on, things are going to get pretty messy. All I can say is your best friend for this round is always try to make sure you have mana wall up on as many characters as possible as consistently as possible, and make sure that your healer has the healing material linked up with the magnify material on the highest level you possibly can have it at at this point. This way the tier 3 healing as well as regen can be cast on your entire party at once. It's pretty similar to the all material off of the classic games, but it is super useful, hands down one of the best materials on the game. Though quite honestly, 9 times out of 10, you're probably going to find yourself dying to Mega Flare, just because he happens to use it at a very inopportune time, maybe as soon as she's about to recast Mana Wall, or as soon as she's about to heal up, he comes out with this beautiful cutscene and completely wipes the floor with your entire team, and it's back to round 1 for you. But you've come this far, so you're not giving up yet, and you finally managed to prevail against these two bosses. And now it's finally time for round number 5, which is against the Pride and Joy prototype. Though luckily it's just kind of this big robot thing that doesn't attack very often. It hits kind of heavy, but quite honestly, if you've made it through the other rounds, you're going to be absolutely fine on this 5th round. It's very unlikely you die. Don't get overconfidence, keep your barriers up, keep on healing and stuff, because you really don't have to do the other rounds over again. But honestly, the 5th round is so much easier than round number 4. And before we go, as we said at the beginning, other than the ultimate weapon trophy, we also get a very, very good accessory for doing this. It's by far the best accessory in the entire game. The name of which I'm not going to attempt to pronounce just here, but you can see it on screen. And what it does is whoever has this equipped, 
starts every fight with full limit break ready to go and also regenerates their limit gauge really really quickly in fights. So if you just skip to chapter 17 on hard just to do this by chapter select and you haven't done your hard full playthrough yet, this is going to make it a whole lot easier. So anyway, that is all there is to it guys. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, don't forget that thumbs up button, subscribe for more content coming very soon and we'll see you next time.